Between stimulus and response there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Forces beyond your control can take away everything you possess except one thing, your freedom to choose how you will respond to the situation. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Life is not primarily a quest for pleasure, as Freud believed, or a quest for power, as Alfred Adler taught, but a quest for meaning. The greatest task for any person is to find meaning in his or her own life. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. When a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. Decisions, not conditions, determine what a man is. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Success, like happiness, is the unexpected side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself. The one thing you can't take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. The meaning of my life is to help others find meaning in theirs. Our greatest human freedom is that, despite whatever our physical situation is in life, we are always free to choose our thoughts. We must never forget that we may also find meaning in life even when confronted with a helpless situation, when facing a fate that cannot be changed. For what then matters is to bear witness to the uniquely human potential at its best, which is to transform a personal tragedy into a triumph, to turn one's predicament into a human achievement. When we are no longer able to change a situation just think of an incurable disease such as inoperable cancer we are challenged to change ourselves. Don't aim at success, the more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued, it must ensue, and it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen, and the same holds for success, you have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will live to see that in the long run, in the long run, I say, success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think of it. If there is meaning in life at all, then there must be meaning in suffering. What is to give light must endure burning. Our greatest freedom is the freedom to choose our attitude. It did not really matter what we expected from life, but rather what life expected from us. We needed to stop asking about the meaning of life, and instead to think of ourselves as those who were being questioned by life, daily and hourly. Our answer must consist, not in talk and meditation, but in right action and in right conduct. Life ultimately means taking the responsibility to find the right answer to its problems and to fulfill the tasks which it constantly sets for each individual. For the first time in my life, I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers. The truth, that love is the ultimate and highest goal to which man can aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought and belief have to impart, the salvation of man is through love and in love. 
Being tolerant does not mean that I share another one's belief, but it does mean that I acknowledge another one's right to believe, and obey, his own conscience. It isn't the past which holds us back, it's the future, and how we undermine it, today. Live as if you were living a second time, and as though you had acted wrongly the first time. Each of us carries a unique spark of the divine, and each of us is also an inseparable part of the web of life. There are two races of men in this world but only these two, the race of the decent man and the race of the indecent man. The quest for meaning is the key to mental health and human flourishing. No one can become fully aware of the very essence of another human being until he loves him. By his love he is enabled to see the essential traits and features in the beloved person, and even more, he sees that which is potential in him, which is not yet actualized. Furthermore, by his love, the loving person enables the beloved person to actualize these potentialities. By making him aware of what he can be and what he should become, he makes these potentialities come true. The point is not what we expect from life, but rather what life expects from us. The more one forgets one's own self, the more human the person becomes. No man should judge unless he asks himself in absolute honesty whether in a similar situation he might not have done the same. Every human being has the freedom to change at any instant. Being human always points, and is directed, to something, or someone, other than oneself, be it meaning to fulfill or another human being to encounter. The more one forgets himself, by giving himself to a cause to serve or another person to love, the more human he is and the more he actualizes himself. What is called self-actualization is not an attainable aim at all, for the simple reason that the more one would strive for it, the more he would miss it. In other words, self-actualization is possible only as a side effect of self-transcendence. You don't create your mission in life, you detect it. Even when it is not fully attained, we become better by striving for a higher goal. Love goes very far beyond the physical person of the beloved. It finds its deepest meaning in its spiritual being, his inner self. Whether or not he is actually present, whether or not he is still alive at all, ceases somehow to be of importance. An abnormal reaction to an abnormal situation is normal behavior. We can discover this meaning in life in three different ways, one, by doing a deed, two, by experiencing a value, and three, by suffering. Between stimulus and response is the freedom to choose. In times of crisis, people reach for meaning. Meaning is strength. Our survival may depend on our seeking and finding it. Man's main concern is not to gain pleasure or to avoid pain but rather to see a meaning in his life. In some ways suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds a meaning, such as the meaning of a sacrifice. A man who becomes conscious of the responsibility he bears toward a human being who affectionately waits for him, or to an unfinished work, will never be able to throw away his life. He knows the wife for his existence and will be able to bear almost anyhow. Despair is suffering without meaning. Love is the only way to grasp another human being in the innermost core of his personality. Success is total self-acceptance. Ever more people today have the means to live, but no meaning to live for. One evening, 
when we were already resting on the floor of our hut, dead tired, soup bowls in hand, a fellow prisoner rushed in and asked us to run out to the assembly grounds and see the wonderful sunset. Standing outside we saw sinister clouds glowing in the west and the whole sky alive with clouds of ever-changing shapes and colors, from steel blue to blood red. The desolate grey mud huts provided a sharp contrast, while the puddles on the muddy ground reflected the glowing sky. Then, after minutes of moving silence, one prisoner said to another, how beautiful the world could be. If we take a man as he is, we make him worse, but if we take man as he should be we make him capable of becoming what he can be. Just as a small fire is extinguished by the storm whereas a large fire is enhanced by it, likewise a weak faith is weakened by predicament and catastrophes whereas a strong faith is strengthened by them. But there was no need to be ashamed of tears, for tears bore witness that a man had the greatest of courage, the courage to suffer. To suffer unnecessarily is masochistic rather than heroic. God is the partner of your most intimate soliloquies. The attempt to develop a sense of humor and to see things in a humorous light is some kind of a trick learned while mastering the art of living. Life asks of every individual a contribution, and it is up to that individual to discover what it should be. For the meaning of life differs from man to man, from day to day and from hour to hour. What matters, therefore, is not the meaning of life in general but rather the specific meaning of a person's life at a given moment. The one thing you can't take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. The last of one's freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given circumstance. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.